um, thought that I would talk a little bit about um, escape velocity, orbital velocity, the differences, and how rockets exactly get to space. Um, so I was trying to find like, I don't actually have a tripod, so I'm um, kind of just chilling here by uh, my favorite lake. And I was um, just wrapping up this week's uh, lectures on my course in Einstein's Theory of Special Relativity. Well, is in order for a rocket to get out of Earth's atmosphere and enter into what's known as orbital velocity, which I'll explain in a second, it has to be moving at like 7.9 kilometers per second which is, I believe it's 4.9, you have to multiply that by 1.6, so it should be 4.9 uh, miles per hour. Yes, I got that right, okay, I'm sorry, for 4.9 miles per second. So that's crazy. So a normal car, right, you're moving at like um, 60 miles per hour, this has to be moving at 4.9 miles per second. Like per second, like that's really, really fast. Um, and that's to reach orbital velocity. So what that means is you're getting right outside of the atmosphere. So you're getting right outside of the atmosphere, these beautiful clouds and everything. Um, but then you are still within orbit of the Earth. And so a lot of times our satellites, so like how we tell the weather, or how I'm even able to use the internet right now, um, we have satellites that are orbiting Earth right now. Um, and they have to reach that velocity in order to still be pulled by gravity because gravity is is a force it's a, oh my gosh i'm losing my hat um gravity oh darn it okay bad hair day today um, <laughs> so um anyway so but you have the force of gravity from earth acting on your the spaceship and so it's pulling it down so that it it won't you know like it won't go like flying away and, okay i'm just gonna take the hat off it keeps falling off uh, it won't go flying away um so once it's at this 4.9 meters per second or miles per per second it will stay within um like earth's uh earth's like gravitational pull so it'll be within earth's orbit now escape velocity so that literally is exactly what it sounds like velocity is just speed and escape is like we need to escape i don't know whatever you guys feel you ever need to escape um like a family reunion or something um it's literally just leaving so in order to reach escape velocity you have to be moving at seven miles per second so that's like i'm, I'm looking at my notes right now i literally um wrote this down because i didn't really remember the exact numbers but it's it's really really fast um so 11.2 kilometers a second um so that's yeah so seven miles per second um so that's really fast that's 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 close to half of what the orbital velocity will be and that's right when it escapes and so um a good way to explain this is i was thinking when i was walking around the city the other day i'm gonna take a stick and i'm gonna draw it out for you guys okay i found a stick there's a lot of sticks here um i'm in like the best park ever okay so I'll use, it looks like someone was like breaking on this. Okay, anyway, so um, I hope the camera turns around properly, but so say this, I'm just gonna draw a circle, right? This is Earth. Wait, let me like, oh my gosh, my stick just broke. Okay, let me wet the stick a little bit. Uh, gross. Cause that way at least it'll, it'll draw a deeper circle. Okay, so let's say that this is Earth, right? And let's say this is the rocket. So the rocket needs to take off and it goes here at that um, 4.9 uh, miles per second that we were saying. Um, so once it reaches that 4.9 miles per second, it's now in orbital velocity around Earth. So it can stay in orbit around Earth. Once it like, you know, reaches then that uh, seven uh, miles per second, so it's now like going from 4.9 to now 7, it's able to escape out of Earth's gravity, let's say this is Earth's gravity right here, it's able to escape and instead of, you know, completely looping around and, and being within Earth's um, gravity, it will, whichever direction it's in, it's going to just, -choom! so then it'll just kind of shoot out and, and go into space in whatever direction it needs to go in, and uh, yeah. Okay, I hope you guys were able to like follow on that. Um, I'm sure you were, cause y'all really smart. And um, yeah, so that's kind of um, just a gist on um, orbital velocity versus escape velocity, how fast, how fast rockets need to move. Um, sorry, I just got a message from my friend. Okay, um, and yeah, so I thought that I would talk a little bit about that. 
and how cool are these rocket launches guys there's so many going on there's a lot going on right now so um, comment your favorite um, launch have you guys ever been to a rocket launch and if you have which one um, I went to the launch of the Atlas it was the Gozar weather satellite so the most recent it's now the Go 16 weather satellite um, that is now telling us our weather um, and that was on board an Atlas V rocket. It was really cool. It was almost a year ago. It was like November. So this time last year, I was like stressing out booking flights and everything like that. Um, and it was at Kennedy Space Center. It was really cool. It was the first time I ever went to NASA. And um, it was exciting. I loved it. It was really cool. So, um, so I went to that. I'm hoping to go to a SpaceX launch because those are really, really cool. Um, like a, a, like a, I really want to see like a Falcon Heavy launch. Like, who wants to see a Falcon Heavy launch? Like that's really cool. Um, and I'm curious to know if any of you guys were um, there during like the Apollo missions, or if I mean that must have been so cool to live during like you know like the the space shuttle program also right after the Apollo missions and and what it was, what was going on and and if you guys actually got to see any of um, the space shuttle launches, that must have been so cool. Um, so yeah, comment below what you guys think. And I'm gonna get back to you guys soon about everything I'm learning. Well, it just got real windy. Um, everything I'm learning in this course, it's so interesting. Um, it's literally just, it's uh, more of like an in-depth learning on uh, Einstein's theory of special relativity. Um, and probably after that, I'll, I'll go into the general relativity. Um, Cause I like, I understand it, but I wanna know like a lot more of like the depth and like how he actually kind of developed a lot of these thoughts. Um, I just think it's really cool and interesting. So I will talk with you guys soon and look at this view. It's so pretty, right? Um, it's literally mid-October and, and it's, um, I don't know, it was like 80 degrees earlier today out here in New York City. But okay, and I will talk to you guys soon. Bye! So I have a pretty easy way to elaborate on length contraction um, from that is like Einstein's perspective and what he was talking about when it comes to measuring things in space and things looking like a lot smaller or bigger or so actually smaller. Um, not actual physical contraction, like I was saying with the submarine when it's under a lot of pressure, but just like from perspective and different perceptions, um, just the way like right now, this red truck behind me, it's a donut truck. So it looks really, really small. Um, it's kind of similar to like also what I was talking about with the lamppost, how they all looked really close together and then you moved and you change your point of view and they seem to have um, had now a distance between one another. This literally is a perfect example. I mean, look at how tiny this truck looks like it, if I was here, it would look, uh, it would measure only like, uh, like an inch in, um, in length. But obviously once now I move closer to it, okay, I'm going to try not to get hit by anybody running. Okay. Let's run. Okay. So now as we're moving closer, it obviously looks like it's a lot bigger and expanding. This literally is, um, just it seems so simple but that's exactly the beginning of um, what was working on Einstein's uh, theory of special relativity it literally is what is relative in space what is um, relative and what is suspect what doesn't change its size or shape and what actually does change its size and shape and now as you can see as I'm getting even closer that this truck looks a lot bigger and it seems to be expanding in size which is really weird and it literally is just point of view it's uh, perception and as I get right up to the truck, you can tell that it is not <laughs> an inch so in diameter. So I wanted to just kind of explain that a little bit to, to elaborate on what actually I meant when I was saying length contraction. Um, and just, it literally is perception. It's, it's kind of crazy. So um, that's what I liked a lot about uh, so far with Einstein's uh, theory, because it really is just kind of finding and noticing all these different things that work differently in space and time and how each thing is... Um, constantly changing and that's what he means by relative um, because it really depends on where exactly you are so rel like yeah it's just crazy um, so I hope you guys get that um, so so I was yeah. thinking of a perfect example um, like these sticks right here so let me back up far enough where you literally can see that there are two different sticks uh, they are two different sizes but as you get closer to this stick and you have a different side, a different like angle and a different point of view, it looks like this stick is like the same height as that stick, right? They look like the same freaking stick. But you need to realize that there is a long distance between these two sticks. Perfect, perfect uh, explanation, I guess would be if I pick this stick up and you can see just how big it is. And as we get closer to this stick, you see that it is actually much longer than this one so 
I thought that would be another example where it's just like you literally change your perspective and your point of view and it seems to contract in size like contraction or change in size uh, especially in retrospect to another object that would be nearby and actually stars kind of work in the same way and it was just kind of like what I was explaining the other day to you guys about um, constellations and their distances and then also it's based like so like the length of these sticks let's just say that with stars that would be like the brightness of them the luminosity um, and one of them might be really 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 bright but it could be super far away and there could be a much dimmer one that's a lot closer to us but they might actually look like the same brightness and the same type of star but they're really not it's just that one is a lot closer and I think I did a I did do an example once in one of my old YouTube videos <clears throat> using like light you know on my on my phone like a light bulb um and just seeing like the literally just the differences in in distance um and realizing that you know like in some of our constellations in the sky these stars are like can be millions of light years away from one another but they make up a shape compared to us just because of where we, we're looking at it in the universe they really have absolutely zero correlation with one another sometimes um but it's just that it looks like that and look at how pretty like these leaves are so pretty here. I freaking love my park. Nope. 